Well, up here, first of all, I'd love to make a comment. First of all, I want to say I'm very proud to be back at Monroe High School. I graduated from Monroe High School in 1995. Congratulations. So I'm very happy to be part of this community, be part of this. And I'm going to speak, as a, I'm going to speak out. My name is Al Mejia. I'm with the Panorama City Neighborhood Council, and I'm also a chairman for Commerce. Could you use but the I microphone, please? Oh, sure. Thanks. But I'm going to speak mostly really as nice. a resident and as a student that came to this school. I have to agree 1,000% with most of the stuff that you said. It's like one of the things that I think we're missing out nowadays is that a lot of the teachers are getting paid based upon experience, but not really based upon performance. And in my experience, when I came to Monroe, we had really, really, really awesome teachers. And two of them, when I graduated, that was their first year. But they made an impact in my life that has been 16 years, and I'll never forget what they did in this school. So I believe it should be based upon performance. If you're actually getting the numbers and you're actually teaching the class, then that should be recognized, not just based upon you've been here 20 years, and if you're just sitting, you're not really doing what you're supposed to with anymore. So that's just my small comment. And also, I mean, I've seen so many people, as an example, we were pretty sad that at Panorama High School, they trying to take away their uh, music program. And in 2000, 2009, they got the first place at state level. Their teacher is obviously doing a pretty good job, and he's going to get fired. Be like, how do I look at a 16-year-old kid? I knew this kid. He plays piano, violin. He plays the trumpet. He plays the trombone. He's in 10th grade. And they're going to tell him, we're going to take away music from you because there's no money. I mean, we understand that as adults, but to a 16-year-old who plays four instruments, he got to the state level in his second year of high school. And you're gonna tell him, I'm sorry, but we can't have it no more? I think it's pretty sad, so. I'll say it should be based upon performance, not based upon time, and I, I'm very happy to hear the ideas that you have and the plans that you have for the future. Thank you very much. Sure, I'll make two comments. One is, I did get the privilege to visit Panorama um, and the remarkable continuation school that's attached to Panorama as well. And um, you're right, um, not only do kids should not have those courses um, because the budget got taken away, we should be adding courses in the arts and in the sciences, um, period. And we should be adding language at the elementary school. But California woefully underinvests in public education. Um, it has systematically chosen to fund its prisons at a much better rate than it has chosen to fund its kindergartners. I mean, if we're talking about the budget cuts that we face in the state of California next year, and I get the governor's May Reves came out, and he has a plan, and he wants us to work, I think it's great. I felt for the first moment some encouragement. It's not voted on yet. There's no cash there yet. Now vote on it, and I'll be even more encouraged. Not you, but you know what, what I mean. The legislature has to pass this. But when we're talking about the idea that we've got to cut five days, or if, God forbid, the governor's budget completely goes down, 25 and 30 days, I mean, that's like a seventh, a sixth of the school year. People are not reducing prison sentences by one seventh. Schools have systematically borne uh, 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 a disproportionate brunt on this issue. And it is totally, totally wrong about that issue. We've been saying over and over again that there's a way to restore nearly all the cuts at the school base level. And, and, and after this week, the majority of our unions have been side by side with us. And I know that there are others who are coming on board. It takes a little bit longer for some than others, but I, I firmly believe they'll be there with us, and we will be able to do that, to take matters into our own hand while we wait for a state to pull itself together. But I gotta tell you, um, it, is, it, is very, um, it is very amazing to see how much teachers give, even though conditions are so hard around them. And I think one of the things that's been really clear to me has been over and over again, uh, principals and support staff and bus drivers, people have done everything in their power to support students. Um, and we intend to do the same thing for them. So, I'm sorry, thank I'm, you. I'm gonna just I'm another comment. One of the things that we've done, we understand that the budget is pretty bad, but as the Chairman of Commerce, one of the things that I did is I went and knocked doors in each of the business, and a lot of the businesses are willing to put money towards education. What we did is we got like gift cards and stuff like that, and McDonald's was pretty, pretty nice. In 7-Eleven, they've been giving us gift cards to encourage his students to do better in school. That's one of the ways, I mean, I understand the government not always have the money, yes. but you can reach out to your community. There's really a lot of companies out there that really, they got money in their pockets and they don't mind sharing. I mean, they can register in their taxes. So that's something that I would invite the community to do. Say, you know what, you take the first step and go, don't depend always on the money that comes from the government. If you really care about the education, you can do something yourself, you know, go see what you can do. If you got a couple of bucks, you know, it doesn't hurt to give it to a kid. Thank you.